Good morning all, Mary Bolger here, naturalist with Iowa County Conservation, and I want to welcome you to our third edition of Virtual Critters Live. Today we are going to be talking a little bit or learning a little bit about the snapping turtle. Um, and so this is kind of an animal that some of you may be very familiar with. Uh, the snapping turtle is a member of an animal in a bigger group of animals called reptiles. And so reptiles have um, some special characteristics that make them unique and different from other animals. Um, so I'm just gonna go over those really quickly and then we'll kind of get more specifically into the snapping turtle. So um, when it comes to reptiles, they have um, some physical characteristics, things like um, scaly skin. Um, and when we think about scales, I think we all think about a snake, right? So I have a snake skin here. It's really long. This comes from one of our snakes that lives here at Lake Iowa Nature Center. Um, they shed their skin as they grow. Um, and scales are made of something called keratin, which is a protein. And actually our hair is made of keratin and our fingernails are made of keratin too. So um, we have something in common with reptiles, which is really neat. Um, so turtles have scales that cover their body. In fact, um, their shell is just a modified type of scale, and we'll talk more specifically about that in just a moment. So reptiles have scales. Um, reptiles also have, um, or also are cold-blooded, and so to be a cold-blooded animal means that you can't keep your body temperature warm um, like mammals can, like people can, like cats and dogs can. So we can keep our temperature about 98.6 people can um, as long as we're healthy, but reptiles are cold-blooded. They have to go out somewhere where it is warm, like the sun, warm a warm sunny day, to do what's called basking in the sunshine to warm their bodies up. And then they can be a little bit more active. That gives them energy. Um, during this time of year, because it is way too cold for them, even if it is a sunny day, they have to be hibernating. So be someplace where it is a little bit warmer. Um, so they have the scales, they are cold blooded, and they lay eggs to have their young. Um, and so their eggs are not hard like bird shell eggs, those brittle shells, like when you crack a chicken egg. Um, they are leathery and they are a little bit, um, they give a little bit. I kind of compare it to a, um, a hard boiled egg. So they're solid, but they're a little bit soft. And we'll talk, we'll look at some pictures of eggs, of turtle eggs here in just a little bit too. Um, and then they also breathe with their lungs. Um, they have lungs that they breathe with, unlike some animals that have gills that breathe underwater. So, so here's that picture of the um, snapping turtle again here. Snapping turtles um, can get pretty massive. Um, they are known for being a very kind of feisty animal. They have super long necks. So if you see them crossing the road or in some sort of habitat, it's best to give them some space, but they're really neat to look at, right? Um, and so snapping turtles, um, or turtles in general, actually, they have their shells, right? Um, snapping turtles have really kind of unique shells. They have lots of texture and lots of big pieces right here. And turtles, let's look at a real turtle shell to kind of show some examples. Turtles have shells that are made from bone, right? Um, so we have an internal skeleton, so do turtles. And the inside of that skeleton is made from bone, just like this. You can see there's lots of little pieces. And in fact, a turtle has a backbone, I'll bring it a little bit closer so you can see, that is fused or attached to their shell, their bone, um, that protection. And so that means that they cannot take their shell off and still be alive because they need that backbone. And all of those into other internal bones, ribs are attached to the inside of here as well. So shells are made of bone, um, and then on the outside of their shells, they have another layer. These, do you see all these teeny little sections? They kind of look like rectangles, but with a little bit of a different shape. These are called scutes, and these again are made from 
keratin. They're kind of a modified scale to protect the inside, the bone on the inside. Um, and so snapping turtles, this is a pretty good size snapping turtle shell. They're really unique in that they have a lot of texture. You can see there's some big points right here. They have some pretty special scales. And then on the bottom or the back of their shell, they have this zigzag pattern. That's kind of a characteristic of a snapping turtle. So really unique um, snapping turtle shell, right? Um, as with all turtles, all turtles have shells and shells provide protection for a turtle. They can bring their head and legs and tail on the inside and protect themselves, um, or um, they kind of use it as a home or a shelter as well. Um, now, when it comes to the shell, um, there are 60 different bones that are fused or attached together to make up the shell for turtles. Um, and then they have those scoots on the outside. They usually have about 13 of those, depending on um, what, they, what type of turtle they are. Again, made from that keratin. Um, <clears throat> and very, very unique. Um, there are some turtles that have a special, the snapping turtle doesn't have too big of a bottom, so the top actually has a special name. This is called the carapace on the a turtle. And then the bottom of a turtle shell is called the plastron. Snapping turtles don't have too big of a plastron, so usually you only see this piece when we see snapping turtle shells. So, um, so snapping turtles also, let's look at a couple more pictures. Um, they have, when they get pretty big, they have big, massive claws that they use um, when they're digging around in the mud, when they're about ready to lay eggs, females do. Um, and also kind of to help them get prey and things like that as well, right? So big, massive claws. Another characteristic of reptiles that have limbs, snakes don't have these, but all other reptiles, so alligators, um, turtles, lizards, and crocodiles have big claws or have claws. Um, so this is a neat picture here. I said, remember that um, reptiles lay eggs. Um, so for turtles, they most of them are very aquatic. The snapping turtle is aquatic. They live and spend most of their time in the water. We do have a few terrestrial turtles here um, in Iowa, so that means living on land. Um, but Snapping turtle is aquatic, and so what they have to do when they lay their eggs is they have to come out onto land and find a place to do that. Um, so snapping turtles will go come out of the water, they will find a sandy or a muddy area, and then they will dig with their back legs here um, a hole, and then they will lay some eggs in that hole. And so turtle eggs um, are round, spherical shaped, they look kind of like ping pong balls. They're about the size of ping pong balls. Um, and snapping turtles will lay lots of eggs um, in that hole. So many, many eggs, because a lot of times their eggs are eaten or found by predators, or their young are also um, eaten by other predators as well. So they have to lay a lot. So they're, um, there are turtles that are surviving into adulthood, okay? Um, so remember, those eggs are leathery. They give just a little bit. They're a little bit soft. They're not hard and brittle like bird eggs. Um, and they're kind of pretty unique. Now, when young turtles, snapping turtles, hatch, um, they will hatch in their eggs. They will dig their way out of that hole, um, and they will emerge. And when they are very, very young, when they're just hatched, they're about the size of a quarter, so they're very, very small. Um, and they look like their parents, the adults, just much smaller. Here's a close-up picture of a snapping turtle hatchling. You can see has that shell, has that little tail right over here, um, those front legs and that snapping turtle face and, um, and um, eyes and everything like that. But they are very small. Remember, about the size of a quarter, super small. Um, so neat when we think about that, right? So when it comes to turtles, um, they're the baby turtles, um, they look just like their parents and they have the same internal structure. They have that shell. The shell is, has a little bit more hardening to do, so they need to um, make sure that they um, 
continue to grow. They have um, a little bit of a soft spot, kind of like our our um, our young do um, on their heads, but theirs are is underneath on the bottom of their shell. Um, but the internal structure is really neat. We looked on the inside of that shell, that big snapping turtle shell, but I have a picture here that I wanna share with you to kind of give you an idea of what the inside of the turtle looks like. So not only the skeleton, they have an internal skeleton that is attached to that shell, that protection, um, with a backbone, so vertebra. They have ribs, they have four legs with phalanges or toes, they have a skull, um, and they have a tail along with the pelvis. Um, so neat skeleton structure here. Um, and then they have lots of internal organs. Now their internal organs, depending on what type of turtle they are and how big they are, they have to be kind of um, scrunched together in that shell because turtles, some can be small, some can be quite large and they'll kind of change and grow as the turtle does. Um, with the snapping turtle that can grow to be a very large turtle, they're gonna have bigger organs. With smaller turtles, like our box turtles and painted turtles sometimes, they are gonna stay pretty small. So let's take a look at a couple of the internal structures um, that I have some skeletons here. So this is a um, turtle skeleton and I'll kind of move it around so we can see it in an acrylic block. Um, and you can see it is a small or a hatchling turtle, very, very small. Um, and you can see that structure, the bone, the shell is made up of that bone. We can see its skull looking here in the front and those legs on the side. And you can see that in some places in the um, shell that there are a little bit of some missing pieces and that's because they have to continue to grow as they grow older. They have those soft spots there. And let's look at the bottom too. These two open spots, again, are the same. As they continue to grow, those will close up. So they have to be a little bit careful when they're young. And then I have one more thing that I wanna share with you. Um, and this is not a real snapping turtle skull. This is what we call a replica. It's made of plastic, but it looks exactly like a snapping turtle skull would. Um, same size, same shape, same color. Um, so it has two pieces here, the upper part of the skull and then the lower jaw. Um, snapping turtles, when they get large, can get pretty massive. They have very, very strong jaws. Turtles have a beak on the front that they use to catch their food with. Snapping turtle has a, an especially pointed beak um, when they get large. Um, so they have um, pretty big eye openings, though they have pretty poor eyesight. They're mostly in kind of muddy, shallow waters when they're hunting. So they use their sense of smell. So they have really big sinus cavities openings that they can smell with. They also use um, their feet and things to feel around and um, pretty poor eyesight. Um, but then they use their big beak their jaws, their powerful jaws, to grab whatever they are eating. Sometimes they're eating carrion, so dead animals. Um, other times they're eating other turtles. Um, they're eating fish. They're eating insects, depending on their size, if they're younger. Um, anything really that they can find and fit in their mouths, they're going to catch and eat. So um, that was just a little bit about the snapping turtle today. Um, and as always, if you have any questions about the snapping turtle, please put those in the comments. Um, also, if you have any suggestions for future Virtual Critters Live, you can put those in the comments or you can email me at mbulger at co dot iowa dot ia dot us. And I'd be happy to um, put that in a future um, virtual critter slide. I'm going to put in the comments a neat resource um, for different turtles of Iowa, a website that you can go and visit if you wanna learn more about all of the many different turtles that we have here in Iowa. There are a lot of cool ones um, and learn some more facts and maybe learn about some places where you might be able to go see um, 
some of these turtles or go find some of these turtles. Snapping turtles are our most common turtle that we have here in Iowa. So you're gonna find them just about anywhere there is water, sometimes places where there aren't water as well. So thanks for joining me today. Um, I hope you have a wonderful day and a good week. I'll see you later. Bye-bye.